Hello, welcome back. Uh, in this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working with reshaping data uh, and also merging data sets together. This is some really useful stuff uh, when you are manipulating raw data. Maybe you're working on your thesis or maybe you're working on a research project of some sort. Uh, this is something that you'll often have to do. Now, if you are not familiar with having to do any of this, you're, it might be a little bit hard to get your head around what's exactly going on in this video. You might want to wait until you actually have to do one of these things uh, and then come back later and watch it up to you. Anyway, so uh, we're going to go ahead and load in the tidyverse as we do. Uh, we're also going to create some data sets that need some uh, merging and some reshaping. Uh, so I've created some data sets with data.frame, uh, just to create some data, some random data. Also, I, I created with Tibble the exact same documentation to create ourselves a Tibble, uh, just to show you that I can do it with the exact same syntax, but I actually do want A to be a Tibble, so let's go ahead and use as Tibble for that. Okay, so let's look at our data sets here. So first of all, let's look at A. So what is going on in A? So we have five different people here the variable person. And I have unemployment rates, just randomly made up unemployment rates. They're a little high for real life. Um, and uh, but we have unemployment rates in four different months. So we have them in January, February, March, and April. Uh, now this is in what's called wide format data. So you might remember back when we talked in the, in the panel data video, there are two different basically formats of panel data. There is long data uh, in which, uh, in, and we also have wide data. This is what's called wide data, when we have the same variable observed in multiple periods, we have one column in our data set for each of those periods. That's called wide data because it ends up with a lot of columns. We can also have long data in which we basically have multiple observations per person uh, and then, you know, one row per person for each of those months that we have. Okay. Uh, now, long data is what we typically use in economics. We pretty much never use wide data. However, a lot of data sets come in wide data format and you'll have to do some reshaping to get them into a format that you can actually use, All right? So we're, first thing we're gonna wanna be doing is we're gonna wanna be reshaping this data into long format. Once we've done that, we're gonna wanna link it up with our B data set, which includes four month observations and then, and then some randomly made up GDP growth data in each of those months. Basically, I want to know for each person in each month, What's the unemployment rate that they face and what's the GDP growth rate that they face, right? I want to bring those all together. So uh, we're going to start by reshaping our data. We're going to use a, a, some functions that are in the tidy R package, which is already in the tidy verse package. So we've already loaded it in. Uh, we're going to be using gather and there's also spread. And so gather takes wide format data, turns it into long format data. Spread takes long format data and spreads it out, turns it back into wide format data. Now, if you want to look, learn about spread, you can go ahead and look at the help file for spread. Uh, we're not going to be going into it because pretty much you always want long format data in economics. We're only going to be talking about how to go from wide to long. If you're a finance person, you want wide format data, go look up spread. Okay, so uh, we're going to want to uh, gather this, uh, gather A into long format data. So we're gonna be using the gather command. Uh, now, here's a handy thing about tidyverse. Uh, the, they're consistent, tidyverse is consistent. All of the commands take a consistent format and that consistent format has the first argument uh, is the data set that you wanna start with. You wanna feed a data set into some tidyverse command and it spits a data set back out at you. And it will spit specifically a, a tibble back out at you. So we're gonna start by giving it the data frame or the, the tibble that we want to start with. Then uh, we're going to give it uh, a, a variable that's going to sort of track which month we're in. So, you know, if we look at the data, we got UR1, UR2, UR3, UR4. We're going to end up with data that has four observations per person, UR1, UR2, UR3, UR4 for person 1, 2, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, okay? So we need to have a variable that's going to store the UR1, UR2, UR3, UR4. So let's go ahead and call that uh, uh, Mo. Let's call it Mo. Not month, because it's, it's going to say UR1, not 1, and when we want to link it up to B, that's just 1, 2, 3, 4. So we're going to need to do a little bit of work to get it into that format. So let's just start with it being 1, or uh, Mo. Then we're going to want to have a variable that actually stores the data. So these unemployment rates that we have right here, we're going to need to store them somewhere. So let's store it in a variable called UR, okay? Uh, then we need to tell it what are the actual variables that we are taking from wide format 
into long. Uh, and that's going to be uh, ur1 through ur4. Uh, and by the way, if we, if we can refer to this in a different way as well. Uh, one of my favorite tidyverse commands is something called starts with, uh, which will pick out all the variables that start with a particular set of characters. Okay? Uh, that, so both of these commands will do the exact same thing. Uh, and uh, starts with ends up being really handy in some other contexts. Here it doesn't save you too much time. But uh, uh, for example, let's say you wanted to run a regression uh, where you wanted to include a whole bunch of controls that all started with the same uh, uh, characters. You could use this with subset or we'll talk about some other stuff uh, later to just pick out those variables. It's very handy. So let's go ahead and run this. Uh, so now if we look at A, we can see that it is in long format. We have person one, two, three, four, five with month one, right? Then again, month two with person one, two, three, four, five, and so on. We have the unemployment rate stored over here, okay? So now, as I said, we want to then uh, bring this together with B. We basically, what we want is to take, let's say, this first month, negative 0.15 GDP growth rate. I want to take that and I want to apply it to every single observation in A where the month is equal to 1, right? I want to paste in the proper GDP growth rate for that month. So I want these five observations here where it's UR1 to have that negative, what was it, 1 point, uh, 0.15 GDP growth rate. Okay, that's what I want to happen. For that to happen, R needs to have a variable that it can merge between those two. So let's go ahead and create one that's in the same format here. We're going to use another tidyverse command uh, in the string R package. String R has a lot of functions that work with string data. And this right here, where it's the letter U, the letter R, the letter 1, that's a string. It's not a number. So we're going to use, a, use the substring uh, command, which is just one of many nice string functions in the string R package. Go ahead and look it up. Uh, I'm not going to be doing a whole lot on string functions in these videos, so if you're working with string data, I'd recommend looking there um, in, the, in the string R package uh, to pull out the month number. Okay, So we're going to create a new variable. We're going to actually call it month, and that's going to be the substring command, and we're going to feed in the, the mo variable. And what substring takes, it takes the variable. Uh, and or the data frame uh, or the tibble um, and then it, it takes the character that you want to start with and the character that you want to end with. So here we have UR1 and UR2 so we're going to want to start with the third character and end with the third character as well so it'll be 3 comma 3. Uh, then we want to actually turn it into a number so let's go ahead and just use as numeric as we've always done. There we go. Okay, now we are ready to combine this A month variable with this B month variable. Now, we're going to use the join command, but you have to be very careful. This is a part of data manipulation that's very easy to mess up, and it's very easy to not even notice that you did mess up. Okay, so you want to read the documentation. In fact, let's start there. Uh, always read the join documentation. This will take us, we can look at the, the dplyr version here. Uh, and this joins two tables, uh, tables together. There are lots of different versions of the join command. Uh, you want to read this and understand which one you're doing. Okay. Uh, and I'll explain a little bit what's going on here and maybe that'll make clear why we want to explain what's going on. Uh, so let's think about what's happening here. So. I want to introduce you to a concept called the observation level. Now, what an observation level of a data set is, it's, it's the combination of variables that uniquely identify a row of the data. Okay, so let's look at A for a second. Now, person does not uniquely identify the data because if I just look at person, there are multiple people, with, there are multiple observations with the exact same level of person. So here's a one, here's a one. Similarly, month does not uniquely identify the variable or the data set A because there's multiple observations with the same month. However, the combination of the two does uniquely identify the data, because uh, if I look, for example, at person two, month one, that's the only observation in this data set that has a person value of two and a month value of one. If I look down, all the other ones with person value of two have different levels of month, not one, okay? So the observation level of the A data set is person and month. If we look at B, it's a little bit simpler, it's just month. Okay, so when we're doing a merge, basically what we're saying is find the matches here. 
So the, the, the actual variable that's the same between these two is month. I want to take that negative 0.15, I want to put it on top of all of these month one observations. For this to work cleanly and properly, okay, the variables that we're merging over, which is going to be month here, should be the, the observation level for at least one of the data sets. Think about it, okay? Uh, if, it's, if it's the observation for at least one of the data sets, it's clear what needs to happen. So it's clear because there's only one observation per month here that I need to take this value right here and I need to copy it into all these right here. Okay, I can do that because month uniquely identifies the, the observations in B. So I know exactly which, when I, when I want to fill in an observation for this one, I know exactly what to go to. There are some complications with this that we want to avoid. For example, what happens if there's multiple matches? What if the, the variable that we've chosen, or the variables that we've chosen to merge over do not, are not the observation level for one of them? So imagine for a second that we had a second month one observation here. So we got month one here that's negative 0.15. Let's say we have a second month one observation that's 0.6. When we're over here and we're trying to figure out, well, what GDP growth value do I want to paste in there? Do I do negative 0.15 or do I do 0.6? Which one do I do? Well, I got to make a choice now. I could maybe make two copies of this observation, so I could do both of them. Uh, I could choose the first of the observations that I had in B. That's kind of arbitrary. I could average them together. That's kind of arbitrary too. Basically, I want to avoid that problem. So you always want to make sure that what you're merging over uniquely identifies the observations in at least one of the data sets. Both is okay too, but really the important thing is that's at least one, okay? We also have a problem in that, well, what happens if there's no match? What if I had a, a month five observation here? There's no month five in the A data set. So what do I do? Do I keep the month five GDP growth rate, but I just have a missing unemployment rate? Do I try to fill it in in some way? Do I drop the month five? That's a choice to make. So when I say that we need to look at the documentation for join, I mean it because each of these different versions of the join command answer those two questions, what to do if there's multiple matches and what to do if there's no match in different ways. And so we need to make sure very clearly which one of them we're doing. And for good measure, once you've done the merge, go ahead and look at the resulting data and make sure that it works how you expect it to. Uh, and by the way, in coming videos when we talk about dplyr, we'll talk about how to check whether or not what you think is the observation level of the data set actually is. We'll get to that. Okay, in any case, we got month here. We know that month is, the, is uniquely identifies the observations in B. It is the observation level of B, so we can safely use it in our join command. We're going to go ahead and use full join. If you're not sure why I picked that particular one, read the documentation. So we're going to join our data sets together, also known as merge. Uh, so we're going to say our joined data is full join A and B. It will automatically know which variables have the same names and so are try we're trying to merge over. Uh, you can look in the documentation to figure out how to do it if, for example, the same variable has different names in the different data sets, things like that. Or maybe there's multiple variables that have the same name but you only want to match over a few of them. Again, look at the documentation. So we're going to do this. It will tell us we're joining by month. We're going to look at the data and we can see it's exactly what we wanted. All those GDP growth rates from month one get pasted into the month one observations for A. Uh, so now, just because we feel like it, we can go ahead and get a correlation. Uh, just core of joined data for the unemployment rate and joined data for the GDP growth rate. Of course, this is completely meaningless because I randomly created this data, but hey, the correlation is negative 0.07. All right. Uh, that's how you can reshape data from wide to long using the gather command uh, from the tidy R package, which is a part of tidyverse, and also how you can merge together two data sets uh, as long as one of them, as long as the variables you're using uh, uniquely identify the observations in at least one of them using the join uh, command or one of the many varieties of the join command, which is a part of, uh, of tidyverse as well. Okay, uh, that's it. Uh, I will see you in the next video. Thank you.